It is essential that our kids have an understanding of the Bible and its historical context. So we will be issuing a memo today that every school district will adhere to, which is that every teacher, every classroom in the state will have a Bible in the classroom and will be teaching from the Bible in the classroom to ensure that this historical understanding is there for every student in the state of Oklahoma in accordance with our academic standards and state law. Why can't parents just propagandize their kids at home? Like the good old American tradition or just like human tradition. Like why do we have to propagandize kids in public school classrooms? I don't understand, but that's what Oklahoma is trying to do here. And mind you, this is very likely gonna be challenged in the courts. Very likely gonna make its way to the Supreme Court. It's obviously unconstitutional because it involves taxpayer funded institutions. In this case, public schools pushing a specific religion onto kids. But you know, the Oklahoma superintendent, that's Ryan Walters, who you just heard from, argues, no, the Bible, I mean, the Bible, it's a historical document. Oh, yeah. It's a historical document. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So let's hear him make that case, and then we'll fill in the blanks. The Bible is a necessary historical document to teach our kids about the history of this country, to have a complete understanding of Western civilization, to have an understanding of the basis of our legal system. And it's frankly, we're talking about the Bible, one of the most foundational documents used for the Constitution and the birth of our country. We also find major points in history that refer to the Bible, that reference the Bible. We see multiple figures, when, whether we're talking about the Federalist Papers, constitutional conventional arguments, and Martin Luther King Jr. who use it as a tremendous impetus for the civil rights movement and tie many of those arguments back to the Bible. So um, are we gonna teach the Quran as well? Because it's a historical text. It's a it's historical text, right? It's historical. Historical document. Or maybe, la ilaha ilaha ilaha. Let's put it up on the all the schools. Come on, let's do it. Or maybe no. Maybe we don't do that. Maybe we don't do that with any religious text. Uh -huh. Because it's public school, and maybe you should teach the kids how to read and do math and learn science. Yeah. Maybe some electives. Hey, how about some music classes? Remember, remember choir and orchestra, like whatever. What is it called? The thing that the kids do with the yeah, yeah, trumpets yeah. and all that orchestra, stuff. Orchestra, yeah. Orchestra, yeah. And band. And band, yeah, band. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> remember that art classes. Remember band camp. Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're going in the wrong direction, Oklahoma, you know it. And they've already dabbled with religion in public schools and got struck down, but they're playing games. Thanks for watching. Our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together, we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. So uh, we are thinking of doing this in Louisiana because when I say we, uh, we have a program called Operation Hope. And our viewers come up with ideas and then we try to make it happen in the real world. And so in Louisiana, they're trying to put up the 10 commandments. So what we might do is get all of our viewers to go and have their students also put up other religious texts. Put it up in Arabic, Chinese, Sanskrit, etc. Mm -hmm. It'll just say the same things. It might literally say the same thing as the 10 commandments. But my guess is you put up, I've got the over under it, three and a half. Arabic texts in a Louisiana classroom, doesn't matter what they say, and that law is gone. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. So we'll try it in Oklahoma too and, and see what happens. So I'm gonna quote the Bible for you in a second, because apparently this is good for our kids. Uh, and you know I love to do it, but I just gotta correct, of course, uh, what he said. That's what our Constitution was based on. Constitution literally says, do not establish a religion, don't do it. It's a terrible idea, right? They're like, as the Constitution says, let's establish a religion. Can you read? Okay, maybe that's because you didn't, you're too busy trying to figure out the historical books of the Bible and et cetera, that you didn't get an education. So can uh, I, can, I, I wanna go back to Louisiana for a second, because yeah. I actually wanted to mention this when we talked about the story previously, but we just kind of ran out of time, and I wanna make the point now. Look, I understand the argument that there are elements of the Ten Commandments, you know, good moral teachings, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. If you want to incorporate that in, the curriculum in some way without it being specifically tied to a religion without it like you want to teach the kids like hey you know what stealing's bad you shouldn't steal that's fine like those things are okay but the fact that they
they have to display the 10 commandments. It's not just about the teachings. It's about making a statement about which religion dominates everyone in that area or in that state. Oh, of course. That's all it is. And by the way, they say that all oh, the gays are sexualizing the kids. We got to ban all the gay books and stuff. It, one of the Ten Commandments is don't have sex with your neighbor's wife. Why? Were you thinking about it? And why are we telling the kids? Okay, I mean, they use the word covet, but you get it, right? So now they're gonna put that up on all the walls. Remember kids, your neighbor's wife is hot and you're gonna wanna have sex with her, but don't, don't, okay? We don't wanna sexualize anything though. All right, so now fun times for quoting the Bible. Maybe we'll put this verse up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh daughter Babylon, you devastator. This is a literal quote from the Bible, oh, Psalm 137, 8, 9. Happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us, happy shall they be who take your little ones, the children, and dash them against the rock. Ooh, that's violent. Wait, are we gonna put that quote up of the Bible where they smash little kids' heads in with uh, against the rocks? Are we gonna have school board meetings with parents like losing their minds over these passages, uh, like reading them? Are we gonna get uh, Senator Kennedy reading these passages uh, during <laughs> a Senate hearing? That yeah. was my ass. Okay, <laughs> and so look, I don't know. Maybe you want to traumatize your kids. All right, last one. Uh, this is Hosea thirteen four. Let's acknowledge this. Hosea is the funniest. I think it's Josea, isn't it? No, it's Hosea. Oh, it is Hosea. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a bit of a Bible expert. I had no idea. Okay. okay. Uh, he says, "You shall acknowledge no god but me. You are destroyed, Israel." Plot twist. Didn't see that coming. Sounds like Hamas's charter. The people of Samaria must bear their guilt because they have rebelled against their God. Mm. Remember Judea and Samaria, that's the West Bank and Gaza Strip and, and, and Israel wants to take it back. So this is a portion of the Bible where God is attacking Israel because they were not uh, you know, holy enough, okay? So- I think we should bomb him. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, look, I'm, put it up on the walls, put it on every wall in America. This is the Bible, okay? The people of Samaria must bear their guilt because they have rebelled against their God. They will fall by the sword, their little ones will be dashed to the ground. Here we go again, okay? Their pregnant women ripped open. Ugh. By the way, this document is pro-life, doesn't look like it's pro-life, okay? So this, look guys, I'm not, I. I feel bad because there's so many great religious people in the world, including yes, Reverend Martin Luther King. That was a hilarious thing. Like, oh, he was a reverend, so we must we should use the Bible. No, just that just because there's terrific Christians and Jews and Muslims, etc., doesn't mean we should adopt their religious texts. And those religious texts have wonderful parts about helping the poor and the needy, but they also have these parts. That's part of the reason why maybe we don't put up. Bible quotes and Quran quotes and Talmud quotes Just in a government situation. Out, keep the religion out of the public schools. That, that's it. But it's it's simple. It's simple. Okay. It's not being discriminatory against a religious group. It's just keep the religion out of it because we live in America. We live in a pluralistic society. And we're gonna have to live with each other, regardless of religious beliefs, regardless of racial identity, regardless of sexual orientation. And I'm so sick of this divisive garbage being injected in public institutions when it's obvious and it's clear in the constitution that this is not supposed to happen. Yeah, and conservative politicians, be careful what you wish for. You really want the kids reading all the religious texts and finding out what's in them? <laughs> Good luck with that strategy. By the way, I mean, they they so Oklahoma also tried to be the first state to authorize a religious charter school, which would have funneled taxpayer money into this online Catholic school that was slated to open in August. And the highest court in the state, the Oklahoma Supreme Court, shot it down. They're planning on appealing it. Okay, go ahead and appeal it, but what a waste of time and resources. Listen, religious liberty is important. Keep that at home, keep that in your private institutions. Go nuts, go nuts. Bible time with Jank Uger, okay? Read all the passages you want. But in the public school system, for the love of God, can we go back to an era where we actually valued educating kids on the basics so they're prepared for life? Yeah, and the minute you put one religious text in a school, they're gonna wanna put all the others. And the minute you ban the other religious texts, now you're actually against religious freedom. So we actually want to protect your religions so you can practice it in any way you like at your home, in your churches, in all the ways that a free American does. But when you force it on our kids, then we got a problem. 
That should be relatively easy to understand. So the satanic temple has already responded brilliantly to this. They're putting out a sign up sheet for their Helion Academy of Independent Learning Hale program. Let me give you their statement. The satanic temple believes that public schools should be entirely free from religious influence. Nevertheless, if other religious groups insist on forcing their way into our schools through legislation, we will ensure our members children enjoy the same opportunities as those of other religious backgrounds. Starting in November, Oklahoma parents interested in religious and morality classes for their students can invite the Satanic Temple's Hale program to their local public schools. The funny thing is that religious folks believe that. They're like, oh, they're gonna bring Satan into the schools. They're playing, they're trolling you. They don't believe there actually is a Satan. They're making a point and a legitimate one. If, if you don't want religions you don't believe in and don't agree with to be included in the curriculum in public schools, then maybe stop trying to force your religion down everyone else's throats. Yeah, last thing I'll say is, look, the problem with doing stories about religion and why they do this politically is because then they're gonna say, oh, see these no good godless Democrats, they're opposing the 10 commandments, they're opposing Bible verses, they're against Christianity, you should hate them and vote for us. But wait a minute, so now you're just flat out saying like we should be a Christian nation and screw the Jews, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the atheists, etc. And if I fight back against you, you're gonna get offended. You're gonna say, I can't believe he read the Bible on the air. You should never read the Bible, wait, which one was my message again? Read the Bible or don't read the Bible? But either way, I'm offended at what Cenk said. He seems to be you know, not in favor of our religion and it's okay though, he's gonna go to hell. So wait, hold on. So <laughs> I like that last part. Yeah, you're offended that I just read your book on air, right? Or whatever, or my tone, or whatever you're offended at, right? Am I allowed to get offended that you think that I'm going to be tortured in eternity for not following the commandments of an invisible God I can't see or hear? Are you even afraid of being tortured for eternity? Aren't we already? Experiencing it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not remotely afraid of it. But I would argue that I could be more offended than you if we're taking offense. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So, listen, guys, the, normally this is when I say the members are going to get a bonus episode filled with a couple of great stories. But good news for everybody, stay right here. This is a free members only one. So, heads not members only. It's available to everyone. Guys, we're going to talk about an ad that. No, no, I'm going to do it. Drums, okay, massive, massive drama involving former First Lady Michelle Obama and the Biden family. Oh No, we got a little- No little joke. <laughs> shots fired. All right, so that's why you should watch the show. You never know what's gonna happen Monday through Friday at six o'clock Eastern. We'll stay right here. Thanks for watching, if you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.